Hello, Matt here with another episode of Magnolia Bridge, where we master the Magnolia bidding style pioneered by Carlton de Reich. For those of you unfamiliar with the Magnolia style, it is a concise yet clear way of bidding, and it is notable for its enriched versions of a few popular bridge conventions. Now, here's Brian. Today, we're having a look at the game scoring capabilities of the iPhone and iPad app called Bridge Binder. This is an app that does three things. One, it lets bridge players document and share their personal bidding style with other players. Two, it lets players record and share notable hands. And three, it scores games for four players. To score a game, select Game Scoring. Here, as the app has just been installed, there are no recorded games listed. Let's start a new game. First, we'll give the game a name. BridgeBinder automatically sets the date and time of the game to the current time. The date and time of the game can be changed to a past or future time. Now, we can choose the type of scoring that we prefer. BridgeBinder currently supports duplicate, rubber, and Chicago scoring types. We'll keep this as rubber for now. The app represents the seating positions of the four players as a group of four dots. The person scoring the game, who may be yourself, is represented by the bottom dot. Your partner, who is sitting across from you, is represented by the top dot. The other two dots represent your opponents who are sitting to the left and right of you. To assign players to each seating position, touch the arrow. Let's add the names of a few players. BridgeBinder remembers every name that you have added, so you don't have to re-enter them the next time you use the app or start a new game. Notice that the names are placed into the list of names in alphabetical order. To change the spelling of a name, select the name to edit it. Once new names have been entered, you can then assign players to each sitting position. Most people assign their own name to the bottom seating position before assigning their partner's name to the top seating position. Then the left person and the right person are assigned. You can, of course, assign the seating position in any order. If you make an error, you can either touch the seating position to reset the seat or just reassign the seat to a different person. The app is smart enough not to assign one person to two seats. Once a dealer has been chosen, you can tell the app which seat is the first dealer. For rubber and Chicago scoring, compass directions really don't matter. However, you can still assign the north direction to a seat. Most people keep north as their partner's seat so that west is to your left and east is to your right. For duplicate scoring, north is always assigned to the dealer's seat because of the way duplicate bridge configures vulnerability. That completes the setup. Now we can begin to score this game by selecting hands. Initially, the type of scoring is displayed. Ensure this is correct in case you have forgotten to set it. When a new hand is ready to be filled in, displayed are the hand number, the position of the dealer, and the name of the dealer. After the contract has been settled upon, enter the number and suit of the contract. If the contract is no trump, then only the number of the contract needs to be entered. If you accidentally specify a suit, then select the suit again to reset it back to no trump, or select another suit. Specify where the declarer is sitting. This can be your left opponent, your partner, your right opponent, or yourself. If not using duplicate scoring, then optionally specify whether a partnership has four or five honor cards in one hand. The score for the hand and the overall score are immediately updated to reflect the honor points. For a no trump contract, optionally specify whether one of the partnerships has all four aces. 
You can also specify whether a contract has been doubled or redoubled. After the hand is played, if the contract was just made with no over tricks or under tricks, select the check mark. If there are over tricks, select the up arrow and specify the number of over tricks. The contract summary changes to show how many tricks were made. Alternatively, if you press a number, the app will assume that you are specifying over tricks. If the contract was not successful, select the down arrow and specify the number of under tricks. To add another hand, select Add Next Hand or select the plus sign at the bottom right. As the form for a new hand is created, the previous hand is collapsed to prevent you from accidentally modifying a previous hand. To expand the details of a collapsed hand, select the hand's arrow. Select the arrow again to collapse it. Alternatively, you can use the Collapse All Hands or Expand All Hands arrows at the bottom of the screen. Let's for simplicity's sake have both partnerships make a game. Then one of the partnerships makes another game for a slow rubber. The rubber is indicated by a yellow bar with the final scores of the rubber. Above the hands is displayed the running score for each partnership as well as the difference in scores. The location of the up arrow indicates which partnership is ahead. At any time, you can select Score to view details of the scoring of each hand. The numbers on the left and right edges are the hand numbers. Numbers without a symbol are the base contract scores. Other numbers have an adjacent symbol. For example, an R symbol indicates points for a rubber. The meaning of the other symbols can be found by selecting the Information button to view help information about the page and then scrolling down. Touching Stats allows you to view each person's statistics. The score points of a hand are assigned to the player that was the declarer of the hand. The statistics for each person shows the number of hands the player played and how many of those hands were successful as well as the percentage. Hands that were not successful have negative score points. The player's score is the sum of the score points of all of the individual hands that the player played. You can email the statistics to the players or other people by touching the document button and then sending the document. Also, the statistics can be printed to a printer that supports your device. If you are curious, you can return to the setup page and change the type of scoring mid-game. Even though duplicate scoring does not support points for honors, BridgeBinder does retain the honors information for each hand. Therefore, it is safe to temporarily view the scores using duplicate scoring, then switch back to either rubber or Chicago scoring. Here's an example of rubber bridge scoring where the scores of each rubber are shown. Here's the same game scored using Chicago scoring where each round consists of four hands. It's always quite fun to share the statistics with each of the game's players. We hope you enjoy the scoring and other features of BridgeBinder as it adds another dimension to your games without having to do all of the addition yourself. And with that, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, and as always, may all the points be with you. Thank you.